Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to talk about engine sleeves, what different types there are, and why you may want them. So there are four common reasons that you would move into an aftermarket sleeve. Power level of the engine, the bore size needed for your build, a material constraint with the factory style sleeve and the aftermarket piston you're trying to use, or you've damaged the cylinder and you need to replace the sleeve. In the realm of power level, the factory was considering the best balance between heat mitigation and cylinder sealing. They weren't really considered about what happened to the engine when you doubled or tripled the power level. An aftermarket sleeve is a thicker build of material and the alloy loans itself to keeping shape under elevated combustion. So as you raise the power level with an aftermarket sleeve, the cylinder will stay round. And when you raise the power level with a factory sleeve, the cylinder can distort or crack. During the rebuild process, you may want to go to a bigger piston to increase the displacement, or you have to go to a bigger piston to get the right bore finish back on the cylinder wall for good sealing. Either way, the factory block has the limitation of how big it can get before the liner gets too thin. In these types of scenarios, you move to an aftermarket sleeve. There are a handful of engines that don't work well with the common 2618 aftermarket piston. These engines use a Nicosole or FRM bore, and the makeup of that bore and the makeup of a common forged piston don't react well. This puts you in a situation where you're going to sleeve the block. Another reason for going into an aftermarket sleeve is you've damaged the cylinder. It's cracked or you've dropped a valve or broke a rod and that, that cylinder no longer has the ability to be fixed and you have to put an aftermarket sleeve in to use that engine block again. So regardless of the manufacturer, there are two different types of sleeves. There's a wet sleeve and a dry sleeve. A wet sleeve, the factory cylinder is totally removed and this sits in its place. So now the water of the engine is directly against the sleeve. A dry sleeve is going to fit inside the factory cylinder. So the factory cylinder stays intact, you bore it out and you press this in. It's worth noting that there are a few advantages with a Darton MID sleeve. These sleeves are installed with an O-ring at the bottom, so the sleeve can be removed if needed. If you use a situation where the sleeves are epoxied in, there's a couple things that are presented. It's hard to get the sleeve out, so if you drop a valve and you want to service the engine, getting the sleeve out if it's epoxied in is going to be a pretty large task. The other thing is when you bolt the head on this, it's kind of floating in those O-rings. There's nothing that's um, unnaturally loaded in the block, so you have less tendency to develop cracks. Um, this is not a new design. They've been doing this in the diesel community for a long, long time. You would just pull the sleeve out when it's reached its service life and put another sleeve in. It also locates on the other cylinders in the block, which offers some rigidity in the deck area. So overall, this is a pretty nice product. Um, it also does a good job of keeping shape uh, under stress and has a good memory. This alloy has a good memory to return to size. Uh, if you've got the engine hot or if you're overusing it, it's pretty forgiving material. There are two different types of dry sleeves. One is a flange performance oriented sleeve and the other one is a non-flange rebuilder style sleeve. So if you're in a situation where you just need to get back on the road, it's not, a, it's not something that you're gonna triple or quadruple the horsepower of the engine. You can use the regular service sleeve on. If it's a performance application, you're gonna use the flange sleeve. While there are a lot of machine shops that can do this procedure correctly, you should understand that this is not something that's very simple and it's easy to screw up. Make sure that you're dealing with a machine shop that has done a lot of this work and they're very comfortable doing this work. If you make a mistake during the process, the engine block will end up in the garbage and you're gonna be out quite a bit of money. So make sure that the machine shop that you pick to do this is capable and comfortable sleeving your block. So in closing, I hope you come away with this with some information that will help you understand what the sleeving process is, what sleeves you should purchase, if there's something that I covered in here that you still have questions about, you can ask in the comments or email me directly. Thanks, have a good week.